All right, so again, we are working on simple interest. So let's read this question and go ahead and do it. This one says, find the balance of a savings account at the end of 10 years if the interest earned each year is 7.5%. The principal is 500. Okay, find the balance. Now remember, balance is gonna to be total. That's where we're gonna take, we're gonna find the interest and we're gonna add it back onto our principal. So it says 10 years. Well, that's gonna be T. And we have 7.5%, that's our R, but we're gonna take 7.5%. Sorry again, sloppy writing here. And I'm gonna move it two places to the left. So it becomes 0 0.075 because we don't multiply by percents. So we change them into decimals. Drop the percent sign. And then we have our principal here, it's 500. There's our P. So if you have our formula, interest equals principal times rate times time. Interest equals our principal, 500, times our rate, our R, 0 0.075 times our time, which is 10 years. So our interest is going to be equal to 375. Now that doesn't answer the question being asked though. It asks us to find the balance. Okay. So our balance is going to be whatever our principal is. Because remember that $500 is sitting there and it's earning interest plus our interest. Principal plus interest gives us balance. The balance of the account. In this case, that's our answer. All right, so again, read it carefully. Remember, um, we have to pay attention to that our, that our rate and our T, our R and our T are compatible, meaning if it's a yearly interest rate, we have to be putting in years. We have to pay attention if they want interest or if they want balance. So let's look at another example. Still using always that same formula. A $1,000 savings bond earns simple interest at the rate of 3% each year. The interest is paid at the end of every month how much interest the bond have earned after three months. All right, so here we go into that. It's a thousand dollar savings bond. That's our principal. Our rate is 3%, which we change to a decimal. So my decimal point comes after the three. I move it two places to the right and drop the percent sign. So that becomes 0 0.03. And the interest is paid every month. How much interest will you have earned after three months? Well, our time then has to be out of years because this is a yearly interest rate. See how it says each year? So how many months are in a year? 12. So we have three out of the 12 months. Now, you can reduce this to one-fourth because three goes into itself one time, three goes into 12 four times. Or you can go 3 divided by 12 or 1 divided by 4, and you get 0 0.25. Okay, totally okay to use the decimal. How much interest? So I'm not interested in the balance. I'm interested in the interest. So interest equals principal times rate times time. So our interest equals our principal, which we said here is 1,000, times our rate. Our rate, remember, is a decimal. Point zero three times our time and in this case our time is 0.25 type that into a calculator seven point five so interest equals seven point five but it's money, right? Interest is the amount of money we earn, so I'm gonna write it with a dollar sign and then add a zero, $7.50. Okay. Now, if it asks for the balance, I would take 1,000 plus 750 and get 1,750, okay? But it doesn't in this case, we just have to ask for the interest. All right, so let's just look at a couple more examples. See how we're using the same formula every time, making sure our rate and our time are compatible, um, and then making sure we know what we're looking for. All right, so in this example, it says Mrs. William wants to know how long it will take for an investment of $450, there's our principal, 
to earn $200 in interest. That's our interest. If the yearly interest rate is 6.5%, so our rate is 6.5% as a decimal, that becomes 0 0.065 and is paid at the end of each year. We don't know what T is. She wants to know how long it's going to take. So use the same formula. We know how to solve for an unknown, an unknown variable, right? Plug in what you know. Principal is 450, so I'm going to replace P with 450. Interest is 200, so I'm going to replace I with 200. And our rate is 0 0.065. But we don't know our time, T. So now we simplify and solve this. 200 equals, I can take this 450 times 0 0.065 here and get 29.25 times t. What are we solving for? Well, we're solving for t here. I want t all by itself on this side of the equal sign, so I have to get rid of this 29.25. This is multiplying. We undo multiplying with dividing. So I'm going to divide both sides by 29.25. That cancels out, okay? And then I just take my calculator and divide. 200, it's very important to write like this because I'm not deciding which one goes on top. It tells me 200 divided by 29.25. And we get some crazy decimal here. So I'm gonna say T is approximately equal to 6.8376 blah, blah, blah. So we're gonna say that T equals seven years. Okay, it's paid at the end of each year, so six years, not enough. So we're going to say seven years. Okay, but in this example, we were solving for something besides our just our interest. Not a problem, we know how to do that. Plug in what you know, solve for what you don't know. Okay. One more example. A 1,500 loan has an annual, that's yearly, interest rate of four and one fourth percent on the amount borrowed. How much time? Mm. Hey, We're looking at time again. If the interest is now $127.50. All right. This is a $1,500 loan. That's the principal. It has an annual interest rate of four and one fourth. So my rate equals four and one fourth percent. Now, one fourth. One divided by four is 0.25. So that's like saying 4.25% which as a decimal, one, two spots over, 0 0.0425, okay? And it's saying that the interest is now 127.50, that's I. So again, write down your formula. Interest equals principal times rate times time. Principal equals rate, prin interest equals principal times rate times time. Plug in what you know. My principal is 1,500, my rate is 0 0.0425 and my interest is 127.50. We don't know our time. So simplify and solve. 1,000, no, 127.50. And I'm simplifying this side. Get 63.75. Okay, that's when I multiply these two things together, times t. I'm solving for t, <coughs> excuse me, I have to get rid of the 6375. It's multiplying, we undo that with division. So I divide both sides by 63.75. That cancels out to give me one t equals, and then I just type this into a calculator. One twenty seven fifty divided by 63.75. We get two. So T equals two. How much time has elapsed? Elapsed. And it's an annual interest rate, so it's years. Two years. Okay. So this formula can we can be used to either solve for the interest, and if we need to, we can use the interest and add it on the principal to the balance. Or you can also solve it if you're missing, in this case, the examples we've done time, but it also would work for principal or rate.